Hi, and welcome to part three in this Building a Website in Progressive Steps series. I'm Justin Hubbard. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and check out part one and two of the series. In part one, we talk about wireframing, where we actually go through the entire wireframing building process, and we do it in a sped up way. And we also give enough time to explain the entire process to you. In part two, we talk about the header and footer, and we also talk about logo placement, login placement, menu placement, as well as the importance of putting links in the footer and making it act like a sort of a sitemap, as well as putting newsletters in the footer, as well as social links. If you have watched both part one and two, welcome to part three. Here in part three, we're going to talk about the inner section of the home page. We're going to build it from top to bottom, starting with the featured content area, and then we will move on to the actionable content area the priority content section, and then we are going to actually add the Twitter area, which we did not add in part two, and we were supposed to, but we're, so we're going to put it in the master group uh, that we created in part two. And it's very important to add this Twitter area, and I'll explain why during the tutorial. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, and I hope you enjoy the tutorial. I'll see you there. All right, let's get started by creating the group layers, layers that we're going to be working with. The first group is going to be priority content, then is action spot, which will help ensure progressive flow in our website. This should be something that will trigger users to start browsing an important area of your website. Last, we need featured area, which puts our most important content at the forefront for the users. Organize the folders like I've done here. Select the featured group and grab the rectangle tool and draw out the background for our featured area. It should be about 315 pixels in height, spanning across the entire page in width. Since we want, co want the colors to flow in our website, of course, we'll use one of the colors in our logo. So select the rectangle layer and change the color to 948 C7C, creating a nice matching color to the rest of our page. Now right click on the same layer and select blending options. We need to set a gradient overlay. Referring to my notes, we're going to change the start color for the gradient to 948C7C, then change the end color to 625D52. Press enter to submit on both dialogues when you're done. Then grab the gradient while the blending options panel is still open and move it to the top edge of the rectangle. We're looking for a more inset look so let's change the scale of the gradient to 12. Now move the gradient down and to the edge of the rectangle like so. That looks good. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Now press OK and done. That looks pretty nice. We have a featured content section that goes nicely with our color scheme, plus a nice gradient which creates an extra dimension, making the featured area look slightly behind the header, in which case little things like this also help the eye determine hierarchy. Go ahead and pick up the rectangle tool again and create one about the size you see here. This is going to be our glow. When done, move it to the middle and change the opacity to 9%. Now select filter, then blur, create a radial blur, rasterize it, and use the default amount of 10 and press OK. Now you should get a nice slightly beveled glow which also adds an extra dimension to the featured area creating a crease in the middle. Go ahead and move the glow down a bit like I've done and that's perfect. Now let's add the image so select file then place navigate to an image of your choice and use a featured area placeholder. I'm using a rockable one since they are awesome. Grab the edges and size the image like so. It should be around 453 in width and 247 in height. Press enter to submit the changes. 
grab the move tool and position the image to the edge of your ruler and about 10 pixels from the top of the featured area of background. Once you've done that, select the blending options for the image and set up a drop shadow. Make the opacity for the drop shadow 100%. Take off uh, global lighting and set the color to 344248 and hit enter when done. Now set the distance uh, to 0 and the size to 12 since we want it to be even on all sides and press OK. Now select the type tool and write out some dummy text. In regards to the image, we put it on the left since that's the conventional hierarchy of eye recognition. And with the text on the right, users can easily separate the two where it would be harder to do so the other way around. Okay, so after you create some dummy text, double click the layer and align the text to the left. Then set the font to Verdana with a font size of 24 and it's decrease the spacing to 50 for better typography. Now change the color to F8, F7, F7, making our text more readable on the background. It looks a little off, so I need to turn off the Fox Bold. All right, that's better. Now press Control plus T for transform and position the text 828.89 on the x-axis and 208.8 on the y-axis by entering the numbers and adjusting with your arrow keys. Pay attention to the x and y-axis. See we've gotten it to 0.8 and 0.89. Okay now create a new group and call it button. Just like so, select the rounded rectangle and draw one out, just like so. And that should be good. Okay, let's change the color to match the blue in our logo. I don't, I'm not sure why I did that. <laughs> Anyway, let's change the color to match the blue in our logo. So select the layer and change the color to 9CE1FE. Press enter when done. Now with a nice color to match, right click the layer and select blending options. Set up a drop shadow with a color of 4D5151. Change the angle to 90 degrees and the spread to zero. Press OK. Now select the type tool and type your action text such as learn more. Set the font size to about 26 Make it bold and then change the color to 372B14. That looks nice. Now grab the move tool and position the text in the middle of the button. Now with that taken care of, our featured area is nearly complete. Close the button layer so you can stay organized. We want to stay organized. We definitely want to stay organized. Uh, that is very important so that you don't get confused with all the different layers we're working with. Alright, so we're just uh, going to organize one of our folders here. Go ahead and put the feature at the top. Now this is going to be a slider so we need to set up some slide indicators. In order to do that we need to um, grab the oval tool Hold down shift to keep the dimensions 
even and create a circle that's about 15 by 15. The circle will let the users know which slide they are on. Now select the blending options and uh, set up a drop shadow with the color black. Set the angle to minus 90 degrees and the spread to 1. Now create an inner shadow and set the color using all twos. Set the opacity to 100, the angle to 90 degrees, the distance to 1, and the size to 3. The drop shadow color was actually wrong, so let's change that to 050505 to make it a smidge lighter. Now set up a stroke that's 2 pixels. Make it center position with a color of 948C7C. As you can see, we've been trying to stay with a uniform color set. Try to do this with all your designs. Okay, change the color of the circle to B8EAFF. Now our indicator matches just fine. This color will be the active slide. So let's create some more by grabbing the move tool. And holding down Alt plus clicking and dragging to copy the layer, change the non-active indicator to A59F92. Press OK. Now copy this layer two more times. And let's space them out for when we use our line tools. OK, good. Now select the first layer, hold down Shift, Shift. Select the last layer, then the last layer, then select distribute horizontal centers, and now our indicators are evenly spaced. Now grab all the layers and move them to the center of the featured area. Okay, so this section is now complete. Close your groups and organize them as I do. I like to close my groups after I finish working on each uh, to keep myself organized, and it can get confusing when working with lots of layers. In any case, the featured area flows nicely with the rest with the rest of our site so far. Now let's create the action spot background. So grab the rectangle tool and drag one out across the entire page and make the height about 151 pixels. I'll just drag them out more so the effects don't show on the sides by uh, pressing Ctrl T. Select the existing effects on the layer and set a drop shadow with the color AEADAD. -A -A set the opacity to 100, the angle to 90 degrees, and the size to 3. Now take out the inner shadow and set up the inner glow. To have an opacity of 100 with a choke of 100%. Last is the stroke, which we need to take out. Now set the color of the rectangle to a light F0EEEE. -E -E. That creates a nice color to blend and stand out from our background at the same time. Go ahead and grab the type tool and create some dummy text like so. Press uh, shift plus enter to go to a new line or create a line break. Don't use the enter key on the PC numpad. It will exit you out of the edit mode. All right, so double click our actionable text layer and set the font to our famous Tahoma. Make it regular weight with a font size of 24 and set the color to 948C7C. Now grab the move tool and position the text on our background. Next we'll have a bit, add a bit of an inset shadow but it will be created in the same way we use the CSS property. So select blending options and create a drop shadow with the color white. We don't 
need global lighting. The angle should be 90 degrees with a spread and size of zero. And press enter when done. Now hold control and select both layers. Then select the line vertical centers to center the text on our background. Looks like I forgot to take out the stroke on the background, so let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, it looks much better. Smooth background for our action area. Now we want to create an action button. So we're going to make a new group and we're going to call it button. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and create that group, call it button. And once you've done that, grab the rounded rectangle tool and draw one that's about 221 by 50. After that, we're going to match the login button. So bring up the effects panel and set the drop shadow color to Set it to B9C1C1. Set the spread to 0 and the size to 1. Now set up the inner glow with an opacity of 75. A choke of 0. And a size of 2. Set the range of uh, to 1 and I'll take off the stroke. So to make this match, we have to change the color of the button to 00B4FF. Now it matches the login button, which is exactly what we want. So now grab the type tool after you've done that and make some action text, such as start browsing. Double click the layer and set the font to Verdana. Make it bold and set the font size to 18 pixels. The action area is a great way to direct users to a product or other important section of your website. Now grab the text and the uh, text and move it inside the button. Change the color to white. I'm now going to save my project. You should save frequently by pressing Control plus S as you go. Now select both layers for the button and move it to the edge of our ruler. Okay, then hold control and select the background. Press, con uh, press the line vertical centers to center the button. Okay, uh, the size, color, and placement of the action area helps identify the hierarchy. Always take this into account when designing a website. Now you see I've moved the priority content group above the others, so let's create a new group and call it Priority 1. After you've done that, grab the Type tool yeah, grab the Type tool and create the title for our Priority Content section. Double click the layer and change the font to Verdana. Make it bold and set the color to 372B14. Press enter to exit edit mode. Grab the move tool and position the title like so. That looks pretty good. Take a second to finish. Now we're going to, after you get done with that, we're going to look for the big arrow on our logo so we can copy it to the priority content area as a way to bring the eye to the text we want our users to read. So select the layer, hold Alt plus click and drag to copy the layer. Drag the layer inside of the priority one group, move it over just a bit. Now select the type tool and write out your title.
double click the layer and set the font to the to uh, Tahoma change the weight to regular sorry the, the font didn't stick okay there we go I changed the font color to 948 C17 C7C sorry and set the font size to 13 it actually looks a little blurry so let's change the anti-alias to crisp that looks better now grab the move tool and position position the title against the edge of our ruler hopefully you can see where the website is going by now we have three main sections in order of importance and it's the simplest way to think about hierarchy when designing okay let's so let's create a separator so grab the line tool and draw one out just like so afterwards take out the drop shadow and set up an inner glow with a 100% opacity a size of one pixel and a range of 50% now that you have a nice separator we need to add some dummy text so go grab some lorem ipsum grab your type tool and copy it into your project we're looking for no more than 35 characters per line so create some line breaks like I'm doing here remember to hold shift and press enter I'm only going to create a couple for the moment before we finish let's select the layer and change the color to 464646 set the font to Verdana make the size 12 point and set the leading to 18 to uh, create some spacing between our line breaks now we can actually finish creating our line breaks remember to uh, hold shift and press enter to create these line breaks okay I'll grab the move tool and position the text on the edge of our ruler go back into edit mode and space the text as if we were creating padding between the text and our image like you would see on a blog just like so now grab the arrow and move it inside the padded area close the group hold alt, alt plus click and drag to copy it twice now hold shift and select all the three groups then select align the vertical centers and distribute horizontal centers now your content is centered in no time go ahead and select all the groups again and just move them down a little creating some white space away from the title now just close your groups and keep yourself organized okay so we have a priority content section where you can highlight products latest blog posts or anything that is important to your website it's usually a good idea to keep this uh, in the featured area dynamic so the content constantly changes and you give users new things to look for so the last thing we're going to work on is the social area so users can keep up to date with what you're up to so create a new group and call it Twitter we're going to put this just above the footer and make it easily accessible on every page hence why we're putting it in the master group so select your rectangle tool and draw a rectangle across the entire page and make the height about 88 about 88 pixels in height 
go ahead and grab the move tool and move the rectangle just like so select the effects and set the drop shadow color to E4, E5, E5. Set the angle to minus 90 degrees and the size to zero. Now set up the inner glow and give it a choke of 100%. Okay, now create a gradient overlay and set the start color to F0 EC EC. Then set the end color to FA F8 F8. Now set the scale to 30%. and move the gradient up until you see just a small portion of the white color. That looks good and now we have a light background that matches our action area and isn't in the way of our other, other elements. Now let's grab a Twitter icon for easy recognition. Hold shift and drag until the dimensions are 15 by 15 in the info box. Move it against the edge in the ruler, select both the icon and background layers and then align vertical centers. Once you've done that, grab your type tool and write out a Twitter message along with how long ago the message was created. Grab the Move tool and align it with the icon. Go ahead and set the color to 948C7C. Now hold Control and select the background, then align vertical centers. Now the text and icon are centered on the background, making it nice and symmetrical. After you've done that, we need to change the font to Tahoma. The size should be 14. Now select the time in the text only and set the font size to 10. That way we don't want it to be as predominant as the rest of the text. So now that you have a great looking Twitter area that's available on all pages and lets users stay up to date with your activity, let's close all the groups and take a look at what we have. Everything here flows quite nicely using same colors or shades of matching colors. The hierarchy is well laid out with colors, sizes, and positioning making that determination for users. The priority content should be in order from most important to least and can highlight any part of your website that you want users to see as a main focal point. The actionable content areas should strike interest and lead users to a specific part of your website. Actually, now that I look at it, this text needs to have a crisp anti-alias. I forgot about that. After fixing that, Go ahead and close the groups. Okay, so now that you have a full-fledged homepage that works in terms of typography, hierarchy, progressiveness, and uniformity, we can move on to the subpages in the next tutorial.